Luminex Network Intelligence manufactures data distribution equipment for professional lighting, audio, and video applications. Luminex offers a complete range of network switches, converters, nodes, and DMX splitters providing AV designers and technicians with cutting-edge technology to build complete data distribution systems for churches, big events, or large venues. Through products like the Luminode, Luminex keeps it simple and allows the user to easily control what they need to do or how they need to do it. Whatever your configuration is today or whatever your configuration is in the future, Luminex is designed for today but built for tomorrow. Luminex Network Intelligence, AV networking made easy. For more information, go to aclighting.com. That's aclighting.com. With Sermon Shot's church-specific AI, sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10-plus bite-sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections, give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. Com. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, Sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry-leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's Digico. Dot B I Z. This is the Tech Arts Podcast, where we talk about tech, leadership, and all things that concern church audio, video, and lighting. Welcome to the Tech Arts Podcast and the Earthworks Audio Studios. My name is DL. So glad to have you joining us today. Today's episode is sponsored by Luminex and AC Lighting. Through this sponsorship, they provided us with a special guest. His name is Anthony Stofflet, and he will be talking to us about networking and lighting. The networking discussion is one you don't want to miss. We get into how you should set up your network and why using the Luminex products makes it so easy. On the lighting side, Anthony has some amazing insights on Haze using databases to help your lighting techs, how to set up your console, and how to bring organization to chaos. I want to hear that one. For everyone who does lighting, this podcast is one you have to hear. Giveaway alert! The Tech Arts Podcast is doing it again. We're giving away a Luminode. If you don't know what that is, hang on for the Tech Tips segment to find out. But for all of those who want to upgrade your lighting system and win a free Luminode, go to Tech techartspodcast.com and click the Enter to Win button. That's Tech Arts podcast.com and click the enter to win button techartspodcast.com 
enter to win a free Luminode. Speaking of Luminode, today's tech tip is the Luminode. Helping us understand this cool device is Anthony Stofflet from AC Lighting. Hey, Anthony. Hey, David. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm going to see if I can make it through this podcast and say Luminode. You definitely don't want to say that 15 times fast. Luminode, no, Luminode, not. Luminode. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what the Luminode is. What is that? Yeah, so the Luminode is a part of uh, the Luminex brand, and what it is, it's our Ethernet to DMX converter brand, if you will. Um, so it's a whole line of products from one port all the way up to 12 ports. Um, and one of the really cool things about the Luminode is the way that it kind of processes stuff. That's what makes it really different. Uh, so instead of everything being port-based processing, which we're kind of used to, you know, normally like port one does port one kind of a thing, uh, Luminodes have taken that processing and we've created what's called a process engine. So you always have more processing power than what you actually can actually output out of the node, which is actually kind of cool. Well, what makes it so popular, man? So what makes it popular is actually those process engines more than anything. So it's that realm of this process engine is kind of like this little you know, Leatherman that you've got inside of a node of if you need to merge information, if you need to uh, convert it from one source to another, if you need to go for a port of an input or an output, it's kind of just like the world is your oyster. So uh, it's just this nice little thing to kind of have in your pocket. And that's why everybody loves them. It's because of the processing. So it sounds to me like as I'm the dumb audio guy right here, it sounds like it's basically converts your uh, lighting system. So like you have a lighting console, so it's like a real easy way to get to get the DMX to what you need to get it to. Am I explaining that right? I'm just, yeah, yeah, no, you're doing good as an audio person. Um, <laughs> it's kind of just like, ha and then even if you get into scenarios, like, you know, sometimes we, you've got two audio consoles, right? You know, so you've got a monitors in the front of house and they love like, you know, gain sharing between things. Uh, even inside of Luminodes, we can do a little bit of that over who has priority over the other um, on an individual channel basis, you know, so we can say that it's latest takes precedence or it's highest takes precedence. Uh, and so especially inside of lighting world, when we have to look at integrated systems, like we see a lot for churches, uh, it definitely does help with a lot of that stuff. I'm, I'm a church. Um, I don't really deal with networking or luminodes and all this stuff. Like, give me an example how this would help me. Why would I, why do I need to go out and buy this product? So the luminodes kind of take uh, what the industry would normally take is like three or four different products and kind of combine them all into one. So really what it does is just makes it to where there's one place to go to manage everything that is your lighting data on your network. So rather than having to go to this unit and go to this unit and having this unit triggered by this kind of a thing, it's, you know, it kind of just helps bring everything a little bit more into unity and make it just a lot easier to understand and manage. So instead of having two or three things to kind of pay attention to, I just have one device, plug it in, convert it, make it work. That's what it does. Plain and simple. Almost sounds too simple. <laughs> I, I get that a lot with the Luminex brand as a whole, not even on the Luminode side, but also with the GigaCore side for switches. But I mean, Luminex really is... Uh, from from my belief, of course, I'm the brand manager, but from my belief really is the, you know, the networking made simple, the, the nodes made simple. Uh, this is kind of where it comes from. Tell me a little bit more about Luminex. Um, what makes you a brand leader? You mentioned some other things that you guys sell. Tell us a little bit more about the Luminex brand and how you represent Luminex. Yeah, so I'm a part of AC Americas, uh, so which is the parent company of both AC Lighting and AC Pro Media. Um, so AC Lighting, of course, is very lighting driven for everything. Um, and then we also have AC Pro Media, which is very audio and video based, you know, kind of a more of that uh, architainment kind of side of the industry. Uh, so I was brought in uh, for the AC Americas to kind of help with a little bit of everything. So I'm, a, I'm the brand manager, pretty much uh, what I like to say is I get paid to be a nerd. <laughs> uh, I get to be the one that gets called. I was just like, hey, I'm trying to do this really crazy thing. Can you help? Uh, and then you know, everybody knows they can kind of get a hold of me for that, which is really fun. But Luminex as a brand is honestly a fantastic brand using them even before I had this job, which was uh, which is honestly pretty kind of funny. It's a funny story how all that came around as well. But uh, Luminex has a full line of network switches to kind of go along with anything, whether you need some like, you know, rugged switches that need to go up inside of your trusses or on your pipes, or uh, you need something to go inside of an installed rack, you know, for your CMRs, your interconnect rooms or something like that. Uh, we kind of have both of those. Then we get into the Luminode line, 
Uh, and so we kind of have a node for every scenario, whether that's you know rack mount nodes or even DIN mount nodes. Uh, and then we also have a full line of Opti splitters as well. So if you just need to duplicate DMX data, it makes it really easy to do. Um, and a lot of this is kind of what makes Luminex the industry leader at this point is there's not really a lot of people that are doing what Luminex does across the broad spectrum of the AVL market at this point in time. We do see, you know, we see have a lot of brands, you know, that are very, hey, I'm a lighting brand or hey, I'm an audio brand. Uh, but to have somebody that kind of is full spectrum when it comes across to it is, is definitely the difference. I'm assuming based on everything you just told me that they're, the switches are very AV friendly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the whole switches and the way Luminex as a brand even started uh, was people having issues with network switches and having problems with Ethernet converters. And they got together in Belgium and said, let's make the thing. Let's make it different. Um, and so Luminex has continued that to kind of go forth. So if we're on the audio side of things, uh, Luminex is, you know, one of the very founding fathers of some of the AVB stuff that has happened. Uh, we're seeing Luminex's involvement in several other protocols and actually helping with some of the standards um, that get created along those lines. And so Luminex does validate and they really are purpose built for what we do as the entertainment industry. So how do we buy the product? How do we get our hands on Luminex? So best way um, out of the bat, if you just want to know, is to actually just send an email to info at aclighting.com um, or just to ask your local dealer. Uh, most of your integrators uh, will probably have access to, to Luminex as a part of their, uh, their repertoire. Um, so it's asking one of your local dealers or if you don't have a local dealer, send us an email. We're happy to get you guys in touch with each other. So if you're interested in this product or just need help with your networking or lighting systems, please reach out to AC Lighting. You can send them an email at info at aclighting.com or you can go to the website aclighting.com. Again, for all those listening out there, it's aclighting.com. Anthony, I know you have a lot of experience in networking and lighting. Luminex is a part of the overall AC lighting company, and a lot of our listeners use the Vista consoles. Would you mind staying through the break and talking to us a little bit more about networking, the Luminex stuff, and lighting? Yeah, I'd love to, David. Coming up right after these messages, we'll jump into a discussion on networking, why it's important and where to start. Then we'll talk about lighting consoles, why Vista, and the best way to set up your lighting console. All of these discussions start right after these messages from our sponsors. Hang on. Luminex Network Intelligence manufactures data distribution equipment for professional lighting, audio, and video applications. Luminex offers a complete range of network switches, converters, nodes, and DMX splitters providing AV designers and technicians with cutting-edge technology to build complete data distribution systems for churches, big events, or large venues. Through products like the Luminode, Luminex keeps it simple and allows the user to easily easily control what they need to do or how they need to do it. Whatever your configuration is today or whatever your configuration is in the future, Luminex is designed for today but built for tomorrow. Luminex Network Intelligence, AV networking made easy. For more information, go to aclighting.com. That's aclighting.com. Our main sponsor is Digital Grade Commission Ministries. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just better understanding the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Because they are a 501c3 donor-sponsored organization, they come to your church for free and do an assessment of your tech, visitor engagement, and online streaming. Plus, we give away free gear. Be sure to go to audiovideolighting.com and register your email today. This will sign you up for all of the free giveaways and give you first access to everything we offer for free. If you want free resources, training, or consulting, contact Digital Great Commission Ministries today by going to audiovideolighting.com. That's audiovideolighting.com. Welcome back to the Tech Arts Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about lighting, 
networking, lighting consoles, and generally all of that stuff that me as an audio guy, I just don't understand. (laughs) Joining us today for that discussion is Anthony from AC Lighting. Hey, Anthony. Hey, David. How are you doing today? Man, it's good to have you back. I'd like to ask you a few questions about lighting, but before I get into that and we talk lighting and networking and all that stuff, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your experience in lighting. Yeah, so I kind of came up at this like really fun time in the industry. So I got to kind of like grow as our industry was growing. So uh, I started out with lighting with, you know, that basic two scene preset with like a single universe and thought that that was the world. Uh, And then kind of just kept going up from there, Uh, started getting into, uh, you know, bigger and bigger shows and then uh, eventually got my first job at a a local church, Uh, was there for about two or three years and then moved on to uh, actually my previous home church before that one and was there for 10 years. Uh, While I was with that church, I was freelance contracting in for, you know, corporate shows, festivals, touring, uh, a lot of design work, some consulting work. A little bit of, you know, everything, you know, kind of know how that goes is we're all freelancing stuff. And uh, it wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I jumped on board with AC to be the Luminex brand manager. And from there, the kind of the rest is history. So you have a ton of church experience. Yeah, churches were my nine to five. I really loved working inside of a church. Uh, the thing I used to tell everybody is, you know, there's there's no greater uh, you know, feeling inside of the world and be able to, you know, use the gifts, the time, the talents that he's blessed me with and be able to give that back to the church. Uh, so one of the things that's actually really cool about even this job as the brand manager with Luminex and AC is, uh, I mean, I get to talk to so many churches and I get to help so many people. And honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a really good feeling. You just said church was my nine to five job. So a lot of people out there who listen just went, he worked for a church where he only had to work nine to five. I wish. <laughs> I, I wish. Think he, I think he meant nine to midnight and then 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then Saturday from 12 noon to midnight. <laughs> so, something around those lines. I mean, we all had those uh, those rehearsals, especially going into Christmas and Easter's where, you know, 1130 comes around. And you're just like, we still have like five songs to go. Yeah, this is going to be a long night. <laughs> A long night. Well, tell our listeners um, why they should take a look at AC Lighting. What what makes that company so special? So AC Lighting was honestly one of the companies that I found when I was inside of the church world. And a lot of it came down to just the relational aspect behind AC and how they operate as a company. Um, they don't like to hide things. They're very upfront about everything. And they really just turn into this amazing partner to kind of help you through a lot of stuff. Uh, one of the other reasons why AC Lighting is simply just because of the range of brands uh, that we kind of have as a company. So everything from lighting fixtures to wireless DMX, and then of course all the way over into the network side with Luminex, uh, we kind of have everything to fit the installs. And so uh, when I was doing a couple of installs, that was actually a very key determining factor. I could get house lights from them, I could get control from them, I could do all my moving light packages from them. Uh, And then I could have the backbone of Luminex as well to kind of go with the system. And so I knew if I ever had a problem, I had one phone call, I had one partner and they were always there. It was great. Let's talk a little bit about the networking side of things. We're going to get into lighting a little bit later, but why is networking so important for someone to focus on? Uh, You know, a lot of people are just like, I just want to throw anything in there, any setup, but help them understand why networking is important and why we should focus on it. Yeah, so networking has really been this emerging thing that we've all kind of known, right? So like Dante inside of the audio world was kind of like the first premier, you know, network based protocol for kind of everything. Um, Lighting's been doing it for a little bit longer when it comes to Artnet and streaming ACN. Uh, And then we're seeing the adaption, you know, especially in the past two or three years of NDI inside of, you know, especially inside of churches when it comes to using it with ProPresenter or using it with uh, Resolume or trying to distribute video signals across campuses. Uh, And so network really is just this thing that's turning into uh, the backbone of every install and of every tour and every show at this point. And so it really has gotten to this place where it doesn't really matter what protocol you want to use or what you're trying to transfer from one place to another. Networking's kind of just been the generic answer. Even on some installs, you know, we're just seeing people that are installing Fiber and Cat 6A Shielded. And that's all they're installing because once you have that installed, you're pretty much good for anything. 
And so that's kind of this thing with networking, you know, it's just turning into this, this backbone of everything. Yeah. I think, I think you hit it, the nail on the head to use that term. Like everything's going to just this cat six cable, just this network cable. Hey, I want to move my audio from console to console. You know, I was with a church the other day. We were setting up, you know, an Allen and Heath uh, set up. By the way, we're sponsored by Digico. But we happened to be setting up an Allen and Heath set up. And it was just a network cable that, you know, connected the console to the racks. Uh, NDI, as you were talking about, you know, being able to move video across network. Uh, lighting has been in the network world for a long time. And I think one of the things that I always saw with lighting that I actually had a problem with is it crashing or losing connections and things of that nature. And so what makes me nervous about the network side of things is, man, everything going to network, everything going to this Cat6 cable, am I going to have a lot of issues with with crashes and problems? And, and so what I tell people is you will if you hodgepodge the system and you don't invest something into your network. So talk a little bit about that, investing something in your network, why Luminex is more stable than maybe the other brands and how it can help people. Yeah, so the, you, you, you're, you're hitting a lot of the really good points of why people actually turn to Luminex, which is stability. Um, so Luminex as a whole, uh, the, the biggest secret behind the sauce is validation, right? And so Luminex takes the time to you know, put all of these protocols together and intermingle them. And, you know, pretty much it's that thing of like, try to break it, you know, because much rather them try to break it inside of R&D and inside of testing rather than us out in the field, right? Um, and then part of that kind of comes along with just the support basis that you get when you talk to Luminex and when you talk to, well, me sometimes. Uh, it's all of this stuff has just been worked out ahead of time. It's a, it's a very... If you don't know networking, it just kind of works. It's a little bit of like black magic-y kind of stuff, but uh, factory configurations behind Luminex allows you to do, you know, Dante, AES67, uh, streaming ACN, NDI, and without any configuration for the switch. So I've, I've had customers that have taken it out of the box and threw it inside of their rack and have went and done their install without even configuring the switch in the slightest kind of a thing, so. Is that what sets you apart from the other brands? Um, a little bit, you know, so the, it really, what it really comes down to is just the, the stability behind it a little bit more. So it's the validation and it's the stability. So, uh, of course, there's a lot of different switches that can use Dante. There's a lot of different switches that can do NDI. Uh, what it really just comes down to is the robustness of that switch for the longevity that it's going to work. Um, the other thing, too, that really kind of sets us apart is we don't have like uh, like profiles uh, some manufacturers have like profiles of like, oh, hey, I'm going to do Dante, so I need to activate this profile. It's a, that's just not a thing inside of Luminex world. Uh, it just it just works. It's just configured. It just works. Plug it in, let it rock and roll. So, you know, I, I, I bought the gear. Uh, well, let's say I haven't bought the gear yet. How should I set it up? Like, what is the proper way to set this up? You know, talk to somebody out there that's from a small church. They're probably trying to convince their pastor, hey, we need to use switches that aren't going to fail on us, that we don't didn't get from Best Buy. Nothing against Best Buy, but we want to use a switch that is more solid, more robust, more stable, to use your word. Um, how should they, you know, properly set that switch up once they get it? Yeah. So the Luminex world, of course, you don't really need to like set up anything. Uh, what it really comes into is the conversation around what is your network going to look like? Um, you know, are you wanting to keep your, you know, your audio and lighting systems and video systems separate from, you know, the church Wi-Fi? Um, or, you know, do you need internet sources and kind of where do they go? Uh, a lot of the switches and the way networks kind of generally get set up is just kind of, you know, you have a switch in your booth, you have a switch on your stage, uh, you plug your stuff into the switch on one side, plug your stuff into the other side, um, and they kind of just start connecting. It it's, gets a little bit funky, of course, when we start talking about IP addresses and how that kind of stuff works, but that's more just, you know, honestly, YouTube University, man. <laughs> you can't beat YouTube University sometimes when it comes to that. You know, you've mentioned that you're super stable. There's not a lot of setup. What about redundancy? 
Like, how do you guys handle redundancy? Is that something that Luminex is is big on, or is it, you know, hey, it just works? Yeah, so we've, we've actually got the best in class when it comes to redundancy. So if we're doing a, a, what's called a ring topology, right? So you're coming from your switch to another one, to another one, you're pretty much creating this circle between your network switches. Um, if one of those lines fail, uh, you're looking at about a 40 milliseconds of max fall over time. Uh, 40 milliseconds, of course, is really hard to understand. And so the thing I always like to say is it's a sneeze of audio. It's a couple of frames of video. And with lighting, you just cannot tell. And then when it goes even farther into redundancy, uh, even on the node side of things, we can actually do DMX redundancy as well. So if a cable gets unplugged or it gets run over by a chair cart and it stops working, uh, we can actually do a 15 millisecond fall over time on DMX as well. Well, hey, I'm an audio guy, so I can tell people what 40 milliseconds is. It's essentially two to three frames really, really fast. Uh, you, uh, It's the difference between maybe the lips being in sync and just barely out of sync. It's really, really quick. I'm actually surprised that you guys can fail over that uh, quickly. Is that is that standard in the industry or is that something that Luminex brings to the game? It is something that Luminex brings to the game, and it's what a lot of people or a lot of other manufacturers are trying to go after, um, to say the least. Um, to, to really go to the extreme margins for some of this, uh, R40 milliseconds uh, is, is, is best in class, but that time inside of like enterprise, like IT world, if you will, um, that can be in upwards of 252 seconds of time. So there really is a wide variety here, and it kind of continues to speak to the fact that, you know, like Luminex is made for the AV industry. Yeah, so I'm going to hit you with a curveball here, Anthony, because I, I'm really starting to get a little interested in this. But I got an audio system, I got a video system, and I got a lighting system. How would you recommend setting that up on my network? Do I keep them separate? Or do I run them all on, on the Luminex switch all together? And, you know, I don't know, use VPNs or I'm going to spit out a bunch of stuff I don't understand. But like, do I use a VPN to separate it or how, how, how would you set up your network? Um, does your audio system need to talk to your video system or do any of those need to talk to each other? Yeah, let's say they're all they all need to talk to each okay. other. Um, so I would set them up on a flat network or what's called a converged network. So this is where, you know, the Luminex based configuration um, is a converged network. So uh, we can have the audio protocols, the lighting protocols and the video protocols all existing on that same uh, that same group or that same VLAN um, that sometimes gets called. And it kind of just works. Now, the other side of it is like lighting in there doesn't necessarily sometimes need to talk to video or talk to audio, especially talking to audio, lighting and video, just lighting and audio do not want to talk. Um, so I can take lighting and throw it on its own VLAN for organization sake at that point. Uh, so it's kind of looking like groups and VLANs, a little bit like organization folders. Remember when we were all in school, you know, math was green, right? We all agree math was the green folder in the backpack. <laughs> uh, it's the same thing in lighting in the Luminex world. You know, lighting can be green, audio can be red, video can be blue, uh, and we can kind of separate them out into their own folders and then when they do need to talk, it's put them on the same network and kind of let them go. That sounds very easy. Is it that easy? It is that easy, actually. <laughs> Surprisingly, it is that easy. Oh, my gosh. It's really easy for me because when I was a technical director, I would say, somebody go take care of the network. <laughs> so we actually have a lot of people that really look for Luminex because it is the networking made simple. You know, we don't like to talk in terms of syntax or coding or, you know, having to you know, get into command line on stuff because it just gets complicated. Uh, Luminex believes more inside of really nicely developed GUIs are, are kind of what they're called, you know, so it's the web pages. It's, you know, the software that we use called RNAO, uh, which is free, by the way, you can go and download it right now and play around with it, uh, that kind of talks to all the whole network at one point, you know, so inside of RNAO, we can simply just hit one thing and it configures all the switches together rather than having to go from device to device to device. Networking made simple. Wow, that sounds cool. It sounds like the right brand uh, if you're a church and you just want to keep it really, really simple and make sure it works and make sure you understand how it's set up so that things can talk to each other and future expandability. I think Luminex is the right brand for that, but even if you're using something else, make sure you think that through. So. Anthony, I want to switch gears now and talk a little bit more uh, about lighting, starting off with the discussion on the Vista 
lighting console. A lot of our listeners use this console, and I know you have a lot to say about it. I know you have a lot of experience on it. But before we get into that chat, we need to take a break and hear from our sponsors. So stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back. Luminex Network Intelligence manufactures data distribution equipment for professional lighting, audio, and video applications. Luminex offers a complete range of network switches, converters, nodes, and DMX splitters providing AV designers and technicians with cutting-edge technology to build complete data distribution systems for churches, big events, or large venues. Through products like the Luminode, Luminex keeps it simple and allows the user to easily easily control what they need to do or how they need to do it. Whatever your configuration is today or whatever your configuration is in the future, Luminex is designed for today but built for tomorrow. Luminex Network Intelligence, AV networking made easy. For more information, go to aclighting.com. That's aclighting.com. With Sermon Shots Church Specific AI, sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10 plus bite sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections, give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. Com. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. Here's a testimony about this mic from a high level engineer who has worked with a lot of amazing artists. I'm Matt Lowe. I'm an audio engineer. I've worked in some of the biggest churches in America and with some of the biggest named artists in the world. This microphone is going to blow the industry away. Every church in America needs this microphone. Every tour writer needs this microphone and every audio engineer should hear this microphone through their PA. It will amaze you. And I, I, I can't speak more highly about this microphone. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, Sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's Digico. Dot B I Z. What's MXU? We get asked that all the time. MXU is the platform for churches to recruit, train, and retain their volunteer teams. It starts with our vast content library with discipline specific training videos. You can assign videos to team members, upload your own videos, and you can even organize them into courses for a more guided approach. You can keep track of a volunteer's watch progress and check in when they might be falling behind. And with groups, you can keep track of multiple teams and assign roles to specific users to give them the ability to manage your volunteer team. 
It doesn't matter if you're a team of five or 50, MXC will help you care for and stay on top of training for each volunteer. This is MXU, used to help churches recruit, train, and retain their volunteer teams. Join the community and start using MXU for free today. Our main sponsor is Digital Great Commission Ministries. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just better understanding the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Because they are a 501c3 donor-sponsored organization, they come to your church for free and do an assessment of your tech, visitor engagement, and online streaming. Plus, we give away free gear. Be sure to go to audiovideolighting.com and register your email today. This will sign you up for all of the free giveaways and give you first access to everything we offer for free. If you want free resources, training, or consulting, contact Digital Great Commission Ministries today by going to audiovideolighting.com. That's audiovideolighting.com. Welcome back, everyone. Anthony, let's jump into lighting and consoles. Tell us a little bit about the Vista and why you like this console. Yeah, so um, let me start with saying Vista was obviously not my first choice when I was an LD. So let me get that right off the bat. Um, but it very quickly became like my favorite console. Um, so much so that I actually personally own a few Vista by Chrome, a few uh, products and stuff like that uh, to kind of go into it. But the really cool thing with Vista is uh, kind of pegging off of Luminex a little bit is it's very user friendly. Um, you know, you can put fixtures exactly where they are inside of your room. You can import in blueprints and, you know, hang your, fi hang your fixtures on your pipes for everything. It's very click, drag, drop, and kind of finish. Uh, a lot of it when it comes to, you know, programming or editing inside of cues, it looks a little bit kind of like PowerPoint, as I like to say. And so for volunteers or for experienced LDs, uh, it really is just an easy console to use. Sounds like it would work really well for churches. Um, you guys have a physical form, and then I think you have just the software version. How, do, how does the software version work? If I'm a church and you know, I just, I just wanted to be point and click. I want to keep it really cheap and simple. Explain a little bit how the software version works as opposed to the physical form console. Yeah, so the physical form of the console is just add buttons. So think of it just like adding another keyboard to your computer kind of a thing. So it's it's there. It's nice to have. Um, it does give you some like physical DMX outputs, but it's not really necessary. Uh, one of the really cool secrets behind uh, Vista is really the software itself. So when you're coming out of the software, you can just come out of the network port on your computer or, you know, they have a USB to DMX device uh, to kind of go along with that as well and output to your system. It sounds like what you're saying is I can easily expand so I could get the software version first and kind of, you know, get my, you know, dip my toe in the water. I'm an audio guy. Let me just point and click and stuff a little bit. And then I can add physical consoles if I want to get bigger for, you know, my Christmas and Easter events. It sounds like it's very easy to expand. Yeah, so the way that I kind of looked at Vista, uh, especially the newer versions of Vista right now, is was it, it was a modular system. So I kind of just knew how many faders I wanted and did I want the encoder section and stuff like that. And, you know, I just kind of built as the system grew. You know, I started adding more movers. And so having the little spinning dials on the console were, were something that were very important to have at that point. Uh, started to add in, you know, different vocals and wanted to be able to individually solo people. So I needed more faders to kind of do it. And it's just as easy as plugging in another console. Same thing with channel counts when it comes with Vista. Uh, you can actually stack their channel count dongles on top of them. So you can start with just 128 channels and go all the way up to kind of whatever you want. So it's very flexible. Very flexible. So when you have all that flexibility, though, um, what is the best way to set up a lighting console? And let me... Let me put some parameters on that. I, I'm not a church that can hire a full-time person or even a part-time person to run lighting. I'm a church that needs to set it up very easily and efficiently for my volunteers. So if that's the case, what's, what's the best way for them to set this console up? How would you lay it out? So for some of the simpler stuff, this is where those physical buttons and faders become very useful, right? Because you're telling somebody just to come in and just push this fader up is a really easy thing to do 
Um, but you can have a little bit of that inside of the software as well with virtual consoles. So you can just leave a virtual console page open, you know, and have your cue list for, you know, your house lights or for some color uh, or your front lights. And they can just come up there and push those faders the way that they want and call it a day. Uh, or if you have some, you know, you do have some experienced volunteers that, you know, like to actually program out weekend services and make cue lists and all this kind of stuff. Uh, putting your fixtures where they physically are inside of the space and having some of those presets uh, of like, you know, co color presets and position presets and all these kinds of things pre-programmed to where it's just click the fixture, put it in red, turn it on and it's done. Uh, that's kind of the simplest way to do it. Well, I'm going to take you to the other side of the spectrum here, uh, Anthony. I know you've worked with some tough tech, tech directors, uh, tough tech directors. Let's see if I can spit that out. Because um, you worked with me at a church in Orlando. <laughs> and I'm like, do this, do that. Man, the lights here, put the lights there. I need backlight. Anyway, how did you navigate that stress and then deliver an excellent product? Because what I always envied about you uh, working with you on lighting is I would throw 18 things at you, but you kind of knew what to filter, what was important and what you needed to get to first and what you needed to get to last. So, you know, talk a little bit about that working with a tough tech director, your full time at a church. How do you set up the lighting console? How do you kind of filter things and understand what you got to get to first and what you got to get to last? We were a very extensive church. You know, we did a lot of, like, I think my average weekend was 120 to 130 cues a weekend. Um, and a lot of that was just for individual songs. And so something that I started to do was to create a, a database of songs. So I could actually go back and pull the songs from the previous times we did them and just put them into this weekend. And it helped free up that time of not having to go back all the time. But what it also did was to create a system in which it's always getting better because you're working from the last place that you are, which was awesome. Uh, but now the next time you have some extra time, you know, things are maybe just a little bit different this week. It's, oh, well, I can make this better. Let me add to this. And then it just keeps getting, you know, better and better and better as you go. Uh, working with you was, was amazing because it was challenging at that time. If I would get 18 different things, to kind of go with it. And this is where it comes into console setup. Uh, so, you know, we were talking about console setup for ease of use for volunteers. Well, that's not just for volunteers, that's also for me. Uh, you know, being able to have all of my vocal lights on, you know, faders and buttons right there in front of me, it's made it really easy to go, hey, solo this person, hey, solo this person. Okay, great. Pull everybody else down really quick. You know, it's not that I'm trying to, oh yeah, it's channels one through, you know, 15 minus five, you know, to try to, it's. It's just faders and being able to be ultra kind of flexible with it. I, I'm known when I technical direct uh, for being somewhat like a worship leader. And what that means is um, you never know what's coming next. And the reason why I like to take that approach is the worship team gets in the mood. They start feeling the audience and they take worship a certain direction. And the tech team goes, whoa, that wasn't planned. So as a tech director, I like to kind of throw that onto the tech team and not in a way that buries them or makes it so difficult that it's crazy because I still understand some of the boundaries, but I like to basically say, Hey, what if you didn't know where we were going next? What would you do? And that's why I'm not a super huge fan of doing, you know, very programmed cues, very programmed uh, time code or MIDI triggers and things of that nature. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it has its place, and I understand in some of the smaller churches that it may be needed or necessary. But when I'm technical directing, I like the ability to be able to say, boom, you know, the Holy Spirit's moving. This singer is now singing, lighting, show me that singer. And what dro drove me absolutely crazy was when that would happen and it took 30, 40, 50 seconds to get to that person and light them. And so the way Anthony would lay out his lighting console, and I don't know how to lay it out, but I would go up there and he had everything kind of in front of him like he was playing a musical instrument. Meaning, you know, David wanted this person to be lit quickly uh, from front light. He could select that very quickly and throw it up. And then I think you took it a step further by being able to add it into the cue stack on the fly so that if we did three services, typically service one and service two and service three, service one, would, things would kind of change a little bit. The flow would kind of happen, but service two and three were pretty much the same as service one. 
And so you had the ability to quickly add that into your your Q stack. And the database thing I thought was brilliant. I didn't even know you were doing this until after I left that church. But essentially having a database where when they go to sing that song again, you bring that Q stack into your queues and it's already built. And then you can add to that and make it even better for the next time. And then you push it back into your database. So talk a little bit about that with, with you know, obviously the Vista console. How am I pulling cues in? Because, you know, a lot of churches are thinking like Q1 welcome, Q2 song, um, you know, Q2.5 is still that song, and then Q3 song two. And they're saying, whoa, 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 how did he, how did he pull those cues in from a database to be able to use them again? So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so what I did to kind of help, the, you know, all this is organization is really what it comes down to. So I did a new show file. This is why you're good at networking. <laughs> It's, it's all organization, right? It's all organization. It's all everything. It's, so I did a new show file for pretty much every month, you know. So uh, and the way that I did it was by version numbers, right? So if you know, if I know that this is January 2024, you know, the show file would be, you know, uh, church name 2024 version one, right? You know, and then version two is February, version three is March, uh, and so I kind of just be as able to keep that. Inside of each one of those show files, I would keep the weekend service and all the songs that we did in the order that we did them. And that was that weekend's cue list. And so, you know, come, you know, March, April, May, and I'm just like, oh, man, we, we haven't done this song in a bit. The last time we did it was January. I, you know, I can go back in that database. And this is where Vista uh, actually allows you to open older show files and merge them into current show files. So I could go back to version one and grab weekend two, uh, grab this particular subset of queues, and then bring it over into my current queue list. And that way I had it. Is that hard to do? Or is it's that not easy hard. to do? It's not hard to do. Um, it definitely does take, you know, just like time of learning, kind of just like everything. But it's one of those things to where once you have the process down, it's just fluid. Um, now, 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 let me ask you this. It sounds like there may be a few different ways to skin that cat. And so if you're a lighting person, uh, I think what I would say to you is take the concept, which is a database. And you may have a different lighting console, right? You may have a Grand Ame, a hog. Or, do, do they make hogs? I think they yes, still make they hogs. Yes, they still make hogs. <laughs> you, may, you may have a different lighting console uh, out there. Uh, but use the concept. The concept is have a database where you can, you know, when they go to sing that song, you're not rebuilding the song from scratch. You're bringing it in. I just thought that was that was a brilliant, uh, a brilliant plan. Um, so tough question for you, man. Was I was I a hard tech director? Oh no, I loved you. You were great. <laughs> well, I, I heard the sarcasm in that. I loved you. <laughs> but I'm also one of those people that likes to be pushed. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's what here's what it comes down to, you know, working inside of a church, especially with TVs, you know, there's always a love hate relationship, you know, and there's always those times where, you know, things can get a little tense and things can get, uh, you know, maybe even sometimes a little ugly, you know, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, once the service is done, once the service is over, you know, it's getting back to some of these conversations. And I think that's what made us a really good team together. Um, was because we could we could get into it during the services and things would change left and right and it would be completely different than what we talked about. Uh, but then afterwards, come Tuesday meeting day, it's the hey we're going to talk about this and it's going to be great and you know it's also that understanding as a team that we're all here for the same reason, right? We're all here to make the service successful. Yeah, I mean as a tech director, if you were a tech director out there listening or you want to be a tech director, I'll give you a little. Um, information that'll help you. And that is, I was always pushing, I was always trying to follow like a musical instrument. You know what I mean? I wanted to be really flexible and fluid and live. And that's what I was pushing for. And that's what I wanted to do. But if I went to Anthony or audio or pro presenter or video, and uh, we'll use lighting as an example. And I went up and said, Hey, I need this and I need it right here. And I need it, you know, in 30 seconds. If he couldn't do it, he would tell me, give me a few minutes or I'm not able to do that. And he'd give me a really simple reason. Like he didn't complicate my brain with, you know, DMX 512 is blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? He would give me a real simple reason as to why he couldn't do that. Second thing is he never abused that power. You know what I mean? If, if 
if he could do it, he did it. He didn't say, okay, here's the reason why I can't do that every time I asked for something different. So as a tech, I think sometimes we can lean a little bit towards the negative. But as a tech director, I would store in memory and sometimes in notes the boundary that I could take that to. You know what I mean? Like if he said to me, hey, Dave, that light can't physically hit that location, I never asked him to do it again. You know, so I would I would kind of store that information and understand that information or even communicate that information up. But if I was coming to him and saying, hey, I need a backlight in this color in this amount of time, you know, I would get communication if he's like, OK, I can do that. It Just give me a couple minutes because I'm inside a queue stack that I've got to change a little bit. That was great. We would go with it. Otherwise, I got it a lot faster. But I think as a key as a tech director is kind of knowing your boundary and knowing where you need to stop and and sometimes massaging maybe the need or the request so that it fits with what your lighting tech can or can't do. Uh, the other thing to that is I would throw at Anthony a lot of lighting requests to make the service very cool and fluid and musical. But if I didn't have Anthony there and I had a different volunteer on there, I understood right away that I couldn't come at him or her with as much information and requests as I did with Anthony. And so I kind of understood my personnel and understood, hey, this is a really good guitar player. He can do the riffs and kind of go up and down the guitar. This is a guitar player that's going to be a little bit more basic. So I kind of understood my people. So people, workflow, tech gear, kind of keep it in that order and then understand your boundaries. And I think that's why Anthony and I worked really well together. And yeah, there were some moments where I'm like, I'm sorry, I have to have it. And he's like, I worked on all this and now I've got to move all this stuff. And you're going to have those moments. You just are. But I think if you understand your boundaries and you communicate well in a very, what I say, easy to understand layman terminology, then things go a lot better down the road. Yeah. I mean, and I think to, to kind of continue off of that from, from a lighting tech perspective, right? Um, the thing that I always encourage my lighting techs is get to know your worship leaders. Um, because the fun thing is what I was able to do as an, as, a, as an LD, even with David, is I knew when my worship leaders were about to do something because I knew their body language. I could see where they're going. And so sometimes even before David would walk over to me inside of the booth, I'd, he'd come over, he'd say something, and I would just say, already on it, and he would just walk away. And it's just because I already kind of saw some of this the way that it goes. Uh, And then the other thing, too, is rehearsals are amazing. Yes, the worship team loves to just goof around during rehearsals and it makes for a great time. Uh, But you can start to see where they might want to flow during a service. Uh, And so it's really that kind of a thing. And just to also, you know, continue to what David was saying is just as much as I don't like to abuse the power of sometimes I say no. uh, David, as the TD, also didn't abuse his power when he said, I need to have this. You know, this it really is a coexistence of teamwork to, to really pull off what some of these churches are able to do. You said something there that I really liked, and that is rehearse it. Make sure you understand how it's going to happen in the service, but then also understand the difference between the rehearsal and the moment. And here's what I mean by that. I had worship leaders that during rehearsal, they would sing the song exactly how it was laid out and then end during the service, and I mean every time repeatable like money, they would change the song in the same way. They would sing with more energy at the same moments. And I took note of that. And so I would warn my lighting guy, you know, or in this case, Anthony, I would go up to him and say, hey, this is how they rehearsed it, but be ready for this during the service. And I don't know, 90% of the time we were right. We worked with a worship leader that always liked to repeat. uh, There was a song. I can't remember the song now, but he always liked to repeat a certain part of the song at the end. So he would kind of reprise the song again. During the rehearsal, no reprise. I would tell the entire team, 90% chance he's going to reprise that. I also had another worship leader (laughs) that if he got to the end of the song and he had a worship moment where he was, he's kind of stopped and got quiet. I knew he would do an acapella of something not on the worship list. And so we would ask him, hey, you know, if you were going to pick a song, like during that moment, 
that you always pick a song. Like what songs? And he'd give us four or five, right? And so we'd have those off to the side. So I think some of it is what I call organized chaos. It's watching the chaos happen, taking note of that, and then being ready for it the next time. Because it'll surprise you at how many times your worship team uh, does repeat things during the actual moment differently than they do during the rehearsal. So I don't know. Did you experience that? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I think I think the song was Waymaker, if I remember properly. I think you're right. I think it was Waymaker. I mean, we would finish that song, and then consistently, it would just build right back in again, and we just start doing the chorus and chorus and chorus and chorus, and just keep going, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And then there was the one time that he did flip us up, which is why it was ninety percent. He got to the end of the song, and then went a cappella instead of building it, and it yep. was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, but even as I was talking about the database stuff, you know, you were mentioning is like, yeah, I can program the stuff in and save it. There's been a couple of times where I'd pull a song in from a database and just go, wait a second, we're at Waymaker. Why is uh, why is this song in the middle of the cue list? This doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. And then sure enough, we'd get into the rehearsal and it was like, oh, that's why, because we did this, you know, free flow worship thing and I pulled it over or, you know, it was actually a planned chaos moment. And so it made it nice. But no, planned chaos. It's it's that's a great way of saying it. Organized chaos. Organized chaos. <laughs> All chaos is planned by the worship team, in my opinion. <laughs> we like to organize the chaos on the tech side of things. It's it's yes. <laughs> Let's talk about haze. Oh, so A V L H. Let's talk about haze a little bit. That's in the Bible, right? There's there's dew and the sun, and it goes. The sun kind of goes through and creates beams of light. But I'm a pastor. I think haze belongs in clubs. Help try to change that mind a little bit. Why haze in your service? I think a lot of that just comes down into what haze you're. That's going to be a good answer. But unfortunately, you're going to have to tune into part two of this podcast to hear it. I'm going to tell you right now that part two of the Networking and Lighting podcast with Anthony has some great content. Not only does he answer the Hayes question in a way that will change how you think about Hayes, but we also talk about when or if you should scan the audience with moving lights. When should you use audience blinders and what a small church with a tight budget should focus on first. Hey, if you want to get in touch with Anthony, Luminex or AC Lighting, Be sure to go to aclighting.com or shoot them an email at info at aclighting.com. Don't forget to register for the free Luminode giveaway by going to techartspodcast.com and clicking on the enter to win button. Well, that wraps things up for today's episode. I can't wait to talk to you on the next Tech Arts Podcast. Until then, I'm David Leuschner signing off by wishing you a great day and praying God blesses every moment of your week. See you soon. You have been listening to the Tech Arts Podcast presented by Digital Great Commission Ministries. DGCM is a 501c3 nonprofit that was started to help churches with all things technical. Whether you need help building a team, finding the right gear, or just a better understanding of the church tech world, DGCM is here for you. Find out more about our free on-site visits, reports, and consulting by going to audiovideolighting.com. Digital Great Commission Ministries will help you run your church service like a pro. Find out more at audiovideolighting.com. Luminex Network Intelligence manufactures data distribution equipment for professional lighting, audio, and video applications. Luminex offers a complete range of network switches, converters, nodes, and DMX splitters providing AV designers and technicians with cutting-edge technology to build complete data distribution systems for churches, big events, or large venues. Through products like the Luminode, Luminex keeps it simple and allows the user to easily easily control what they need to do or how they need to do it. Whatever your configuration is today or whatever your configuration is in the future, Luminex is designed for today but built for tomorrow. Luminex Network Intelligence, AV networking made easy. For more information, go to aclighting.com. That's aclighting.com.
Sermon Shots church-specific AI. Sermon highlights don't go unnoticed. Easily transform your sermons into 10 plus bite-sized clips ready for social media. It doesn't stop there. Refine each clip by adding or removing video sections. Give them your unique touch with colors, fonts, design edits, and create the goosebump moment with background music. Elevate your message and reach hearts locally and globally. Start today by going to sermonshots.com. From sold out stadiums to intimate live performance venues, sound engineers agree on one thing for the best digital mixing consoles for live sound. The only name that matters is Digico. As the recognized worldwide standard for live audio mixing, Digico consoles are renowned for their industry leading sound quality and ease of use. Whether your application is in a church, broadcast, theater, corporate, sports, or installed sound, Digico offers compact and affordable products from the S21 all the way up to the pioneering power of the Quantum 852. Digico delivers the workflow, the feature set, and the absolute reliability that the world's biggest tours and programs have come to rely upon. If you're looking for a sound console, look to Digico for your answer. For more information on Digico, go to digico.biz. That's digico.biz. From front of house to center stage, for over 25 years, Earthworks microphones have sculpted the sounds of your favorite concerts, venues, and performances. Earthworks Audio is a sponsor of the Tech Arts Podcast. We are so happy to have them on board and excited to promote the new Earthworks SR117 vocal mic and capsules. To find out more about Earthworks Audio or to get your hands on this mic, go to earthworksaudio.com. That's earthworksaudio.com. Capturing emotion with sound. earthworksaudio.com.